Okay. Phyllis is on. Phyllis is on. <coughs> what is yours? Recording? Oh, Lord. I'm not only being seen, I'm being heard. Well. Oh, I got you, Miss Susie. The only so, two that are on, and they're not on, Iris is in and out, and Phyllis is on. Oh, she but is. But Laura, I didn't get. She may not be. And My hair Linda, I didn't get. And Gail is down in the preschool. Let me see if I can get this. Being both on at the same time. Somebody says they're both on at the same time. Look, my hair, is there something sticking up on top of my head? No. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you think hair. Is my hair sticking up up here? Uh -huh. No, it's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> I believe mean, my hair's got a center, too. I've been telling her that. She just said, do not cut my hair. <laughs> I've got to quit laughing because it scares people. <laughs> I was so aggravated when that came off last night. What am I going to do with you? I just saw him going back by. I'm not going to go to arts class or something. Do they go down the hall? We'll see how we quit. What? They called Jim and wanted him to take it. They're the only faithful ones that come to their classes. They really need to go. They really need to go to arts. They asked Jim if he'd teach it, but he said, "Lord, I will leave my class. It's just me and Pitt and Jerry teach." It. He said, "Oh, how nice!" She should just come in here with us and let uh, to go to. That's true. That's true. That's true. Mr. Iris. We'll take any age. Somebody asked me, I said, you might have watched Tom. Yeah. Well, yeah. Are they on? Yeah. Oh, well, I hadn't seen anyone admit. Iris, I admitted to, and they don't want to be seen. No, that's fine. And I don't know, I had text with Phyllis this morning. Yeah, she was on. Uh, <coughs> two on. participants. Yeah. She came on and I didn't yeah. Oh, home or Iris home. is not on now again. Should I invite her again? She had, yeah, she had um, some internet problems. Let me give her an invite again. She did last week, I think. Invite. Iris. Yeah. I was trying to get the baby bottle out of the Iris way. Iris <laughs> Okay. I've invited her again. Yeah, Phyllis is here with us. Okay. Well, if Iris cut, I'll sort of watch a little bit and see. I might sit so, Pam, here when do you bring the ice cream? Well, I guess next Sunday. Um, Pam is fixing an ice cream freezer. We, it was a silent auction. What is it right there? Do we have a basket? Please don't forget the silent option Sunday from 11.30 to 4.30. If your class is prepared a basket, please have it to the church by Sunday morning. All proceeds will go to the Benevolent Center. Yeah, all proceeds go to the church. I think the ice cream thing is a great idea. Well, it the is a great pot, idea. They had a crock pot, but it was all blue. It wasn't those colorful colors, yeah. so I went with the ice cream freezer. Yeah, that's great. It's good, yeah. yeah. yeah thank and you. I've got ice cream salt. And I've got some sprinkles and stuff that goes oh, with the ice cream. Oh, that's cute. And uh, then some little cups and stuff that goes with it. That's it. good, Pam. You did a good job. Thank you so much. We just gave you some money and you went and did it, didn't you? <laughs> that's good. Kendall, okay. will you open us up this morning? Lord Jesus, we come before you, Father, just thanking you, Lord, for how you've been good to us. Uh, but, God, we our hearts are heavy this morning, Father, for Pam and Jerry, Lord, and the loss of Dan. And, Father, we just um, pray for them to have peace, O oh Lord, and to, to have comfort, Father, in this hard time. And, Lord, there's so many others that we pray for, but, Lord, we thank you. And we will pray for later, Father, um, but even in more. But, Lord, we just thank you for being here with us today. And we pray for the lesson that Mom's about to bring us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you so much.
And so today, we continue on, and we're talking about Christ's return, living with the end in mind. <clears throat> and so we talked first about staying strong in the end, and then know what's coming last week, and then today, watch for Christ's return. And this lesson was hard, I thought, did y'all? <laughs> Oh, man, I mean, to get everything straight is a little bit, sometimes a little harder. But anyway, Galatians 2.20, I, I was reminded of that. It says, For I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live. Yet not I, but Christ lives in me. In the life I now live, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and was delivered up for me. So Galatians 2.20 is a wonderful verse. And as we watch for Christ's return, uh, we don't know when it's going to happen. Uh, just like we talked about Pam and Jerry's son, we don't ever know when anything's going to happen. But we have to watch for Christ's return. So when Christ returns, everyone will know it. Now some of this sort of talks about the second coming, and then some of it sort of talks a little bit about the rapture. And you know, we probably won't be, we won't be here except to come back with Jesus for the second, but... We won't be here during the tribulation. But anyway, as Jesus and his disciples were leaving Jerusalem <clears throat> Temple, uh, Jesus informed them that it was soon going to be destroyed. Now, <clears throat> from there they headed up to the nearby Mount of Olives. <clears throat> the disciples quizzed him as to when the terrible events would occur and what was the sign of his coming. So he's told them several times, that the temple, as, he, that, as they left, was going to be destroyed. So Jesus presented a catalog of warnings and illustrations about what to expect and how to respond. So the verses we're talking about today in this session covers more of his discourse about the last day and his return. So anyway, we talk about the first thing, guarding against deception by false messiahs. Creation itself will announce the return of Christ, and the return of Christ will be unmistakable and public. And it was every December uh, we talk about Jesus coming, but not many people knew that, did they, when he came? So back then, uh, as he came and he was born, uh, we celebrate that, as we said, in early December. We didn't know much about it. But <clears throat> the second coming, yes. Every eye will see the second coming. Now, the rapture, he comes in the twinkling of an eye, doesn't he? And he picks us up. And I think about a movie they had a long time ago, Left Behind. <clears throat> and that Left Behind, and I think Kelly was associated with that. And um, in the movie Left Behind, if you remember, some people were there, and then suddenly they were gone. And some people... And I think I remember the movie where even their, their clothes were left or something, they were gone. So, anyway, uh, as we look at this, he's talking today about how Christ's return will be powerful and we can't miss the event. And the second coming. Now, we'll be raptured because we're believers. And in the twinkling of an eye, Jesus will not put down his foot on earth. He'll come in the clouds. And we will, the people that are buried, they'll rise up and they'll have, I don't know what they'll look like. I tend to think maybe we'll look sort of like Jesus did after he was resurrected or something. I don't know. But anyway, just so we're there. And then if we're still here, we'll rise up to meet him. And then after we go back with him, there'll be seven years of tribulation, they call it. So the first three and a half should be pretty normal, I mean peaceful. And then the last three and a half will be horrible. And then after the tribulation, then the second coming of Christ is the curse. And he will put his feet down in Jerusalem there. And every eye will see it. So when we say the return of Christ will be unmistakable and public. And we'll be with him. So I don't know. And you, you we've read somewhere where the earth will be cleansed by fire. So, I don't know. There's a lot of things that you can just keep reading, reading. Uh, my Cecil gave me a little book. It's about prophecy that Jeremiah, Dr. Jeremiah wrote. And I've about read that little thing through. But there's still just a lot of little things you're not sure of. But we're sure 
of the rapture. So, anyway, we're going to talk of the very first uh, scripture. Somebody read um, 23 and 25. I'll read it since Linda's not there. Okay. <laughs> I miss her. Um, <laughs> if anyone tells you then, see here is the Messiah, or over here, I do not believe it. For false messiahs and false prophets will arise and perform great signs and wonders to lead astray, if possible, even the elect. Take note, I have told you in advance. Yeah, now, he's saying here, if anyone tells you, here's the Messiah. Well, you know, really, do you remember Jim Jones? <clears throat> he thought David Koresh. They thought they were the, actually the Messiah or the one who had come to save everybody. So it's not just happening now. It's not going to. It's been happening. Mm -hmm. And it will probably, we'll probably see a lot of this before we're even raptured. <clears throat> so if anyone tells you, see, here's the Messiah. Or over here, do not believe it. For false messiahs and false prophets will arise and perform. There are false prophets on TV. And a lot of others that we see that are false and people that don't preach the gospel. They just talk about things being good for you and it's not right. So somebody read for us, let's see, on page 118. Let's see, somebody read uh, where it says, Matthew gave us a great reminder. Matthew gave us a great reminder that the true Messiah's coming will not be secret or hidden. His coming will not be seen by only a select group. It will be visible to all. Mm -hmm. That's why we should never take seriously someone who says, See, here is the Messiah. Christ taught us to be aware of all the claims about his identity and his whereabouts, no matter how compelling they may sound. Uh -huh. And then the next one, and most of us. Most of us would extend a warning to anyone we see in danger, but we would especially warn those we love and care about. Christ cares deeply for us. We saw earlier that Christ cares so deeply for his children that he will shorten the period of tribulation for their sake, and that's Matthew 24, 22. Mm -hmm. We've already talked about that. Now we read that Jesus warned them of the danger of being deceived by false religious peddlers. Mm -hmm. We should always hear the love of God in his warnings. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, uh, and things will get worse, won't they, as time moves along. Well, <clears throat> we'll see people who probably... More than ever, we'll say, well, you know, or we'll see somebody who thinks they're the Savior. And there'll be people who will follow them. And uh, But anyway, and then somebody read for us over in 119. Jesus said earlier in Matthew 24, 13. Apostasy, yeah. God's elect can't be tempted and tortured. They may even be put to death, but they will not follow the deadly bait of the deceivers. Peter told us in 1 Peter 1 5 that you are being guarded by God's power through faith for salvation that is already to be, is ready to be revealed for the last time. Yeah. You are being guarded by God's power through faith. For our salvation is ready to be revealed in the last time. So <clears throat> everything is ready for the rapture. So it could happen today. It could happen any time. So <clears throat> we want to be ready. Now that's what he said to begin with, be ready. Whenever it comes, whatever it is, be ready. So that's what we want to do. We want to be ready and focus on the Lord. And let's see, in the scripture, somebody read for us Ephesians 3.20. Ephesians 3.20 and then John 14.6. You start our Bible drill. <laughs> <laughs> Built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, but Christ Jesus himself is the chief cornerstone. Uh -huh. 
Oh, that's 320. Oh, 320. Oh, that's not. Mm -hmm. And I, I didn't think it was, but I was waiting. <laughs> Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us. Yeah. Amen. John uh -huh. um, Jesus said, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Yeah. And so <laughs> you, we know that. So guarding, we're to guard against deception. So John 14, 6, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me so that's what that's what we guard against deception and have you seen people on tv or even different times when you thought that's not true what are they saying and are they really preaching the gospel no they're not and we see them a lot of different places but i think about how that jim jones i mean they were then he had him drink kool-aid mm -hmm. didn't he yeah. and they all died yeah and then that David Koresh, you remember, he was out in somewhere with buildings and things. He had several, a lot of wives. and yeah. Waco, was it in Texas? Yeah. But they all believe people. They, they get caught into that, and they believe people. And there was another one that called himself the Messiah. I watched one of those really? uh, yeah. shows about him. Yeah. yeah there, and there he was, was like mean. He was a murderer, and... Got people to murder for him, and yeah. Well, I think that in that seven years of tribulation, I think the first three and a half, that the Messiah he'd be calling himself the Messiah, but he'd be probably be pretty peaceful. But then all of a sudden it will turn, and it'll be horrible. And I was talking to Cecil. Cecil said, "You know, if you don't have six 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 on your head, you can't even buy food and things." And then we was talking about chips and things that. I thought uh, about how they Kitty make was, chips and dogs now, you know, but they make yeah, I don't know what they'll have. But back, but, well, but thank is. goodness we won't be there. We'll be with the Lord mm -hmm. in the rapture. So be ready for the rapture. <laughs> <laughs> and then we look, let's see. Um, well, a lot of people went and get a shot for the COVID because they thought they were putting those things. Uh -huh. Oh, really? COVID shots. I didn't know that. Yeah. But, well... <laughs> Ooh, let's see. We don't know for sure. That they <laughs> <laughs> no, and the room fell quiet. <laughs> I had to open my mouth. I know. And I when uh, maybe uh, got it in me. <laughs> when this lady came to work on our refrigerator, she said, "Do you see that little piece out there?" She said, "All these refrigerators come from Korea." And I said, "Oh, really?" And she said, "Do you see that little piece right up there?" And I went up there on the refrigerator, and I said, "Yes." Yeah. She said, well, "We don't know where that little clip comes from." She says. Korean people could have put it in there and they could be hearing everything we're saying right now. <laughs> I think you got a nut. And I thought, that's what Jim and I said. Drunk the no wonder she didn't fix the refrigerator. She was a nut. That's, well, that's, yeah. But yeah, we don't ever know. Okay, so then now we're going, we're going over here to, um, yes, creation itself will announce the return of Christ. Now this is very. This was very interesting. So somebody read this, twenty six through twenty nine. So if they tell you, see, he's in the wilderness, don't go out. Or see, he's in the storerooms, do not believe it. Yeah. Or as the lightning comes from the east and flashes as far as the west, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. Wherever the carcass is, there the vultures will gather. Immediately after the distress of these days, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not shed its light. The stars will fall from the sky and the powers of the heaven will be shaken. Now, now this reminds me of his second coming right here as he comes back with us. And uh, we'll, we will come back, but everybody will see this. But he says, you see the rapture. I don't think everybody sees the rapture. Do you? I think the rapture, we're gone. Mm -hmm. The twinkling of an eye. There might be a scattered set of clothes sitting over there where somebody's been. Mm -hmm. Cars, different things. All of a sudden, you're taken immediately. But here he says, so if somebody tells you that don't go out there or don't go whatever, do not believe it. For as the lightning comes from the east, yes, and flashes as far as the west, so <clears throat> the coming of the sun will come from the east, the son of man. 
and his foot will he will step down on Jerusalem. His feet will touch the ground, and here we'll be with him. Can you imagine all of us? Here we, I don't know what we'll look like. I sort of think we'll know each other, don't you? I think, but anyway, we will, here we'll be with him. But it says, and then where the carcass is, there the vultures will gather. Immediately after the stress of those days, see that'll be that reminds me of tribulation. The sun will be darkened, and see that won't happen when he first comes. We'll be gone back home with him for seven years. And then the moon will not shed its light. The stars will fall from the sky. And the powers of the heavens will be shaken. So <clears throat> creation will know what's going on. So that's where it says creation itself will announce the return of Christ. Now, <clears throat> we want to tell people that they need to know the Lord and they need to be raptured. But it may be that they don't want that. So that if they end up in this tribulation, there'll still be people saved during that seven years. And then when the Lord comes back and we come with him, he will, his angels, I guess, will go out and get the ones that elect. But it'll still be terrible. And even some of them might be, even if they ask the Lord to come into their heart during that tribulation time, they'll be killed. Or they might be hungry. They won't have any food or anything. But anyway, somebody read on page 20, 120 where it says uh, Christ continued. Christ continued <clears throat> to war against any false teaching about the Messiah's whereabouts. He was saying, in essence, pay attention only to what I am teaching you now, not to anything else you will hear or see. Don't listen, no matter how fascinating the message and signs may seem to be. Don't chase after any of these rumors. Yeah. And, <clears throat> um, uh, um, Teresa, go on and read that next paragraph. So many tragedies. So many tragedies would never have happened if people had taken seriously the truth of this verse. There would have been no Jonestown Massacre, Frank's Davidians, or Heaven's Gate. These people died because they listened to Jim Jones, David Koresh, or Marshall Applewhite give their versions of C, he's in the wilderness, or C, he's in the storeroom. Mm -hmm. If someone tells you he knows the secret path to the kingdom or has a fresh new revelation from God, always excuse to give him a hearing. Yeah. Yeah, and that's what these people, Marshall Applewhite, was that other, the other one you yeah, were talking about? I didn't know. I can't remember that. I remember hearing about Heaven's Gate. Yeah, I did too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's what Charles Manson is. Oh, he, yeah, he was one. Yeah, Charles Manson had a had a, a, a harem and killed women. Yeah, he did. Yeah. That's right. He, he told them he was the Messiah. Yeah. yeah. And about Charles. Yeah. And and uh, uh, we have to focus on the Lord, and know that He's the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to Him, except by, I mean, nobody comes to the Father except by Him. And then we look. Let's see. Uh, somebody look on 121 and read where it says nature will call out the coming of Christ. Hey. Hey, good. <laughs> Glad to see you. <laughs> nature, somebody read that nature will call out the coming of Christ. Nature will call out the coming of Christ. The sun will be darkened and the moon will not shed its light. The stars will fall from the sky, and the powers of the heavens will be shaken. The return of Christ will be accompanied by supernatural manipulations of celestial bodies, or at least manipulations of their appearance. These signs in the sky will be such that all people of earth can see them and realize the end is at hand and Christ is returning. If only, wait, see if I can read without my glasses. If only one of these signs were given, Someone might try to explain it away as an eclipse or a meteor shower. Mm -hmm. But all of them occurring together can only be caused by the hand of God. Uh, Old Testament prophets previously had foreseen these signs in connection with God's final judgment. Yeah. And then that last sentence said, these images. These and images and prophecies contain an unspoken lesson for us. We must not wait until the earth, earth dis disintegrates to follow Christ. 
Follow him now and keep your eyes on him. Yes. So, everyone is, he's talking about being unmistakable, but <clears throat> creation itself will announce the return of Christ. And with all of this, with the sun turning a different color, the moon, the stars falling, we don't know what all, but creation will announce it. And um, so the coming of the Christ. This right here reminds me, this is the second coming when he will be, and we'll all be with him. And then, um, let's see, somebody read for us, let's see, uh, John 1, 19 through 20. Now this was John's testimony when the Jewish leaders in Jerusalem sent priests and Levites to ask him who he was. He did not fail to confess, but confessed freely, I am not the Messiah. A lot of them thought John the Baptist was the Messiah, didn't they? But he let them know. And, and of course there's a lot today that they would love to be known as the Messiah, but not John the Baptist. And he said, I am not the Messiah. And then they, they couldn't understand it, could they? And then we look here to the return of Christ will be unmistakable and public. And this is, somebody read 30 through 31 for us. Then the sign of the Son of Man will appear in the sky, and then all the peoples of the earth will mourn, and they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. He will send out his angels with a loud trumpet, and they will gather his elect from the four winds, from one end of the sky to the other. Yeah. <clears throat> so the sun man will appear in the sky, and then all the people of the earth are mourning because they have not accepted him as their savior, many of them. So they're mourning, and they will see the sun of man coming here in the clouds of heaven and with power and great glory. And... It was quiet when he came at Christmas, the Christmas when we say when he was born, but not here. He'll be, be powerful and great glory. He will send out his angels with a loud trumpet and they will gather. Some of those people who have accepted Christ, they'll be gathered. To, I mean, they will be gathered, the believers. And even though it may be a terrible <clears throat> time for them, uh, or... Uh, they may have died, but they will be get, They will gather his elect from the four winds, and from one end of the sky to the other. And now on page one twenty two, somebody read for us. Just as his disciples' hearts. Just as the disciples' hearts must have trembled at Jesus' description of suffering during this period. They also must have been thrilled as they listened to Christ describe the glory of his return. Jesus ended his description of darkness to announce, then the, sign, then the sign of the Son of Man will appear in the sky. Jesus, personal, physical return will be the ultimate sign for humanity to be told. Yes, so the Son of Man will appear in the sky, the sign of it. And his personal physical return will be the ultimate sign for human, humanity to behold. And then on page, uh, let's see, on page 123, somebody read where it says, Jesus will mobilize. <clears throat> read the bottom of the page. Jesus will mobilize <clears throat> a group of angels who will do the work of gathering believers to join him in heaven. Christ refers to these messengers as his angels. Another fact that shows us Christ is God. God's angels are Jesus' angels. Mm -hmm. Because the good news of the kingdom will be proclaimed in all the world as a testimony to all nations. Matthew twenty four fourteen. Jesus will use the angels as harvesters of the faithful. Yes, and then over on page 124, I was interesting to see where they talked about the trumpets also. And they said that the trumpet would probably be a shofar. Am I pronouncing that right, Kelly? Mm -hmm. Made from a ram's horn, and that will be blown when Jesus returns. Mm -hmm. And we're all with him. 
And somebody read the last where it says, we do not know when exactly the trumpet will sound. We do not know when exactly the trumpet will sound announcing the return of Christ, but when it comes, we'll know it. Everyone will know it. And for those who know Christ, that trumpet blast will be a welcome sound. It will mean Christ has come and we're going home. <coughs> Yeah. What do you think just the ones that don't know him? What do they going to think when just, that happens? That's miraculous right there that everybody in the whole world it's will hear see one trumpet. Yeah. They'll hear see one it. trumpet. Everybody in the world is going to see it. Yeah. So, and that is the that. reason they mourn because suddenly they realize it's too late now. It's too late. They I kind of think about it like I've never been in a tornado, but you know, everybody says when you've lived through a tornado that you hear that train sound and everybody knows it and it all of a sudden it's through and gone. Yeah. I I think it must Pam's be Pam's mom and daddy, that. they got um and they were in a tornado, weren't they? And like they really And Diana's mom and daddy. daddy. The minute that they hear it, I guess. They, you do hear that sound, mm -hmm. that train yeah. sound. I guess it's got to be something. But then everybody will hear it. Yeah. Somebody read for us Daniel. I'll make you go find Daniel 7, 13 through 14. Again. <laughs> Daniel what now? Daniel 7, 13 through 14. Seven. Daniel, sometimes Daniel's hard to find. In my vision at night, I looked, and there for, before me was one like a son of man, coming with the clouds of heaven. He approached the Ancient of Days and was led into his presence. Yeah, now Daniel, they say, tell, talks a lot about the end of the times. Yeah, read 14, I mm -hmm. Yeah, read 14, yeah. He was given authority, glory, and sovereign power. All nations and peoples of every language worship him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion that will not pass away, and mm -hmm. his kingdom is one that will never be destroyed. Yeah, that's right. Daniel had visions. It, it's interesting. We'll come back with him. It's interesting to imagine what we'll be doing in it and where will it be the, the earth is going to be cleansed by fire so there'll be nothing none of this stuff here and but we'll be back will we look like jesus there's a lot of questions in there you know it's easy to if you're not a believer to see how other people think that you know that maybe if you're not a believer, they often, many of them think we're crazy. That's I was going to say that we're nuts. And then yeah. I'm like, <laughs> that's true. Right. That's, yeah. that's, that's true. I think you're ignorant, really. Mm -hmm. yeah. You believe that. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. One day they'll know. Yeah, I wish they had believed. Yeah. Yeah. Well, when I was with Brother Randy and Beeson one night, we, he explained the gospel. And then he asked him, would he accept Christ? And he said, no. He said, I don't believe that. And we walked out of there, and I can remember Brother Randy saying, you know, Martha, hell is probably where that man's going to end up because he has just been presented the gospel and what? He and he, he rejected it. Yeah. And when they reject us, if we're out visiting or if we're talking to somebody in the grocery store, when he when somebody rejects us, who are they rejecting? Yeah. Jesus. Yes, the Lord. I got a hard question. Uh oh. <laughs> but it just came across my head, and I've got to say it. Those people that present themselves as false messiahs who think that they really are and think they're Christians, where do, where do you think they'll end up? Well, if they don't believe in Jesus, and they don't believe in then they'll be in hell. Messiah. If they believe, if they believe they're Jesus, yeah. that's, 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 that's And he said, "I am the way, the that's truth." Way. They can change. I mean, yeah. you know, they can change. They can, change. Yeah. They can yeah. say they, they believe. They yeah. might say they believe, but then they. And you know, a lot of times we don't know. We hear somebody, and we think, "I hope they were Christians." Well, we don't know what happens on a <clears throat> deathbed or what. Mm -hmm. So you know, I don't ever. You don't ever want to judge because you don't really know. Because as you judge, what? We'll be judged. Yeah. No, we don't want that. And then somebody read for us Revelation 14. You can find that. <laughs> Revelation is the last book in the Bible. <laughs> 14 through 16. <laughs> no, go for it. Do it. Oh. <laughs> uh, 14. Yeah, 14 through I looked, 16. and there 
before me was a white cloud, and seated on the cloud was one like a son of man, with a crown of gold on his head and a sharp sickle in his hand. Then another angel came out of the temple and called in a loud voice to him who was sitting on the cloud, Take your sickle and reap, because the time to reap has come, for the harvest of the earth is ripe. So he who was seated on the cloud swung his sickle over the earth, and the earth was harvested. <clears throat> I'm excited. Excited. Because we know that when we leave here, he never, he said, he said, uh, uh, what is that, John 14, 1 through 3, says he, he's coming to get us. And and he wherever he is, what, we'll be with him. And so we're here trying to do the best we can, trying to do what he wants us to do. But one day he will come just like that. And we'll be gone. And thank goodness what will be with him. You know, to, Martha, I can remember being little, and this scared me. Yeah. So that tells me then that I did not know Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> but to be but in I the presence. It scare me anymore, but yeah, I can remember when you just scared yeah. me. Yeah. Well, you know, preachers, <laughs> you know, preachers used to preach hell. I think that's what you yeah. know, hearing, uh -huh. hearing the preachers preach. I can remember being little. I think that... Um, Gail has something to say. Well, I was just going to say, if you keep reading, it is scary. Hey, yeah, now, <laughs> it is. Is it saying that you know an, another angel came with a sickle, another angel came with a sickle, yeah. and then it said um, he swung his sickle across the earth and gathered the great harvest of the earth and threw it into the great wine press of the wrath of God, and the wine press was trodden outside the city and blood flowed. And the wine press <clears throat> as high as a horse's bridle for sixteen hundred sabia. That's awful. That's now awful. Scary. Will that will that happen after we after the rapture though? We'll be gone yeah. when all that this happens. Is all yes. A part of when he came back the cloud. He's in the cloud Second. right now, yeah. and this is all happening. As yeah. He's coming out of the cloud. Yeah. As he's coming out of the cloud, he'll put his foot down. Yes. And all the angels. And I'll tell you now, I don't think we're supposed to understand every little no, thing. No, no, no. <laughs> I, if you yeah. think I do, I don't. But but we do uh, as we read more and more. And <clears throat> I think Dr. Jeremiah has done a lot of work on uh, prophecy. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I like to read his. And there's a lot of different things. But, you know, and even the things I'm like, Pam, in your Bible, uh, the explanations they give you, like you're reading, mm -hmm. is really good too. Miss Susie, what were you going to um, say? Do you think that? In verse 16, it says, So he was he who was seated on the cloud swung his sickle over the earth, and the earth was harvested. Do you think at that point that we're harvested? Because then an angel came uh, out of heaven, and he too took his sickle. So, you know, uh, yeah. it's two different, two different things. Times. Yeah, yeah. The Lord that's what I don't think we're going to leave this horrible stuff. Yeah. Yeah. No, we won't see the horrible I stuff. Think we'll be. This says... This says the imagery is that of the harvest. John saw an angel gather the grapes and throw them into the great wine press of God's wrath. This harvest represents judgment and not oh. salvation. Mm -hmm. okay. The yeah. same idea of a harvest of grapes occurs elsewhere in Scripture. The grapes are trampled outside the city suggesting that these people are banished from the presence of God. The blood of those trampled by the feet of God will be deep, as high as the horse's bridles, and yeah, will flow far. That's tribulation. This yeah. description of bloodshed vividly depicts the extent of God's judgment. Mm -hmm. All who oppose the reign of God will be crushed. Yeah. <clears throat> so we will... Probably. And when we come back with that second time, well, he will reign for a thousand years, and we'll be here. So in a in a new in a new world, world. Oh, a new new world. world. Yeah. yeah. Well, oh Lord, my God, when I in awesome wonder, I consider all the worlds Thy hands hath made. I see the stars. I hear the rolling thunder. Thy power throughout the universe displayed. And when I think that God, His Son, not sparing, sent Him to die. I scarce can take it in that on the cross my burden gladly bearing, he bled and died 
to take away my sin. Then sings my soul, what? My Savior God to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee, how great thou art. How wonderful. I mean, just the studying of all of this has is, opened my mind, but how great thou art. And Sissy, you want to close? Lord, we thank you so much for the day that we could come to Sunday school to study your word. Thank you for Martha who's prepared your word for us and delivered it for all of us to hear and put it in us. God, uh, we a lot of times don't understand all the messages that are there to us, but we do know that you say in John 14, 6, that you're the way, the truth, and the life. Yes. And no man comes to the Father except by you. And the Father, we know you, and we know your Son, and we have that comfort of knowing that we'll spend our eternal life with you in heaven. We don't yes. understand everything that's going to happen, but we do have that promise of eternal yes. life, and we yes. thank you so much for asking us and choosing us to come forward to be your servant and to be yes. holy yes. and to love everything. you and to share your word with other people so that they too might know. Father, please help us to follow through with your great commission that we will invite others to know you and that they too will have that promise. So we thank you, we love you, we praise you. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. 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 Now, Ann, I need a, one of those uh, prayer things, please, Pam. <coughs> you, you need one. I do. And next week, trust God's timing. So, I don't know what that'll be all about, but we'll see. I don't know. Uh, just that I will get back to normal. <laughs> I go for a blood test in the morning. Um, they told me I could go to Jacksonville to Walgreens Lab Corps. Thyroid. For thyroid. And then last week they did a Doppler on my legs, see if I had any blood clots. I didn't. And uh, then they did that congestive heart failure test on me. So eventually... They're going to find out that I'm a tough. Here. <laughs> <laughs> tough old cookie. <clears throat> okay. And then I got some unspoken. And, of course, we're praying for Pam and Jerry this morning. And for Ben. Yep. And for Ben. Uh, I guess everybody knows that they found, everybody knows they found Dan. Dead this morning, last night. I did. I wondered about you. I, I talked to. I didn't know it. Yeah, they found that. It happened last night. Believe it happened last night. I called Pam and talked to her a little bit. I got one early last night, so it hit me. Yeah. I didn't know until she said that. She's and he was asleep. She he had moved in with them, hadn't he? Took a nap. And then he. And she said he was staying with them. He was staying with him. He, she went in there, said he would take a nap. She went in there to see, I didn't know see about him. Either, so. And it was dark, and she said she just she felt of him, and he was cold. This was early last night. Yeah. I talked to her, she said, this morning. She said, well, she did she, talk, talk I talked to her for just a second. She, I didn't figure she'd answer, but then she called me back. And, of course, I told her, I just reminded her of different ones who had lost their sons and daughters. I keep talking about it. But anyway, she said, God will get, me, get us through it. Unspoken, and uh, me and Ted both go to the doctor Wednesday, but it's just for checkups. But uh, maybe we won't be in too much trouble. <laughs> Sometimes for all the worst ones. Actually, ex-husbands just, I won't go into details, but I don't know. Bless her heart. So pray for that situation. Yeah, yeah. Pray for him and pray for Ash. I'm more concerned about Ash, but I don't tell him. I won't go into any details either. Linda on her trip, right? Yeah. 
She, she says her mama's in. She, she should be there by now. She wants to pray for Robin. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, a couple of uh, crazies. Uh, all I can say is I got a settlement. So that is all done, completely completed, but that's all I can say. And uh, then I also got an, an offer to create a class for Berkeley Online of Artist Management. So um, that's praise. Who is Berkeley at? It's Boston. Oh, it's no. the Bo- Berkeley College, but it's the Berkeley There's College some Online. It's online. Oh, it's the online. Okay. So I it's a pre nice offer and the, and the one the senior director of uh, the edu- uh, faculty called me um, a couple of days ago and talked to me about the class and so my thought is, is if this works out well and I create a good class it might turn into a few other classes mm-hmm. and then so you wouldn't have to leave no, no I hope I not see, I could, a, friend of mine, I said, no. a friend of mine that I used to work with at Belmont Michael Harrington he's big like publishing goes to the Supreme Court as a you know uh, witness a lot of times stuff. I just knew him at Belmont, and he kind of got me in <coughs> with a, this woman and got me an interview uh, the other day. And so, and I mean, it's just one class, but That's it's an never opportunity. Know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it might be with that, with my creative stuff and doing another record, it might be all I need to do. I don't know. Mm-hmm. And then an MTSU has offered for me to do a, a little class this fall. So. Um, I'm just following the Lord and just waiting to see what happens. Um, praying for Mom, but I have seen her get better. Yeah, um, I I'm told her better. her breathing is better and she's getting around a little better, even though she still hurts. Yeah, my legs actually didn't hurt much this yeah. morning. Yeah, and so the Lord Opened has them all. heard our prayers in that. Um, she she like no, she's not. Is she? I, 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 I know. I watched too, and I saw her. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. I yes, I know. Ann told me on Disciple last Monday when she went, You look so better today than you did yesterday. <laughs> I didn't care, Ann. It was good. But, but uh, they they know that. And when they did the Doppler, they told me I didn't have any blood clots. But she said, You got a lot of fluid in your legs. So something's causing it. Yeah, so they're getting the bottom of it. Yeah. Uh, Pray for me, pray for her home. She's not able to divide at home. So, uh, we'll walk down there and share. Y'all just pray for me. Okay. Okay. Now we're not allowed downstairs. Okay. Right now, no one's talking. So I'll pray for him when I ride by your house. I go by Onda's house. I have to go by Onda's house just about every time. If I go that way, come into town. We're praying for you, Onda. Uh-oh. Because of chest leukemia, you know. Yeah. So just pray for Helen. She'll probably be at church today. <laughs> <laughs> how, how, she goes to church with Teresa. To she did. She was going yesterday. I mean Friday, but she couldn't go because of her okay. foot. But she went the week before. Okay. Yeah. And they had a great time. Yeah. And, and how old is Helen? Ninety. Ninety. Ninety years old. I bet they have a good time together. Yeah. It's so tough to see each other when they go. I saw a picture of Dennis's mother. They had gone up there yesterday. She's a hundred, you know. And I know. She, she, looked, she looks like she's eighty. She's just playing with the kids and big smile. Yeah. I saw a picture of your mother and on Facebook, and it was that Tia's mama. Oh yeah. Barbara, uh, I have, I'm stuck in a lady, and then uh, um, 
I remember Stephanie, she, we got her all set up. She's moved in and everything. And uh, she's still having struggles with the kids. I mean, now, where the kids. She, now she's still in common. Another, okay. But, uh, you don't have teenagers on. Oh, yeah. I mean, they're good kids and everything, but she gets stressed out. You know? Yeah, she, she it's just her. Yeah, it's hard raising them by themselves. Yeah, yeah. Well, she's still, she's doing it. Well, she's got a good mama that helps her. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I said, I goes up there and. All day Wednesday. I mean, I got home at five thirty. Um, <clears throat> sandwich. Brushed my teeth and got and put me a bag and got went up there and I never went up there at dark but when I got to Smead it was getting dark yeah and I knew where the the places were mm -hmm. where she lived but I couldn't see them you know uh, yeah so I went on to the first dollar store she said you go to the first dollar store you went too far mm -hmm. and so I called her and they had went to the London and her dryer quit. And Gracie got come and got the car and me and we went back. And I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> that's a dark road up through there. Yeah. But I just put my teeth in. Yeah. <laughs> this is me. I'm it's good, Barbara. You. Yeah, it's a good mom. She's a good mama. Yep. But Iris. Don't Iris, think she I don't ever think so. came on. No, she <laughs> never came that's back on. Connection difficulties. Yeah. Yeah. She, she was. Just keep remembering her health. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And then Patty, everybody keeps telling me Patty's coming back. Well, Patty. Patty. <laughs> um, Only so thing is, Valene's going to have another yeah. baby. Uh, that's scary. Yeah, that's, yeah. <laughs> and I say, you know, uh, in Jacksonville, uh, the college is going to do like a daycare or something like that. Oh, she put oh. so she can take her there. Is she going to put her in there? I don't know. I thought that'd be good. <laughs> I doubt that. I doubt, that. <laughs> I doubt it, too. <laughs> <laughs> well, that'd be good. We'll see. Yep. <laughs> I'm just going to put for family. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then Laura. Well, she's, oh, she's, she's not on. Traveling. All I know is she's up there in the Midwest in Montana somewhere with Aunt Rena. <laughs> on uh, and on they, Amtrak. They have, and they have 10 inches of snow, I think, on the oh. ground right now. And on the Amtrak, they yeah. got 10 more days. And I think she told me that Mason called her, and he was doing pretty good. <clears> so... But she told her she wasn't paying nothing else. She said, I'm not going to support his partying. Well, sometimes you have to do that. So I think, yeah. you know, I think that. That's what she was doing, so really. she told me that much. And so anyways. Now, they stop here so often on the train. Yeah, get on and off at different hotels and stuff. But she. It but Aunt funny. Rena's been a little sick lately. Yeah, but it was funny. She <laughs> let me know after their first night or something on the train. She said. That's the worst bed I've ever slept on. <laughs> you know how Laura is. Okay. Anyway, yeah. It was funny. And Mary, I know she'd still want us to play with yeah. Mary. Yeah. Mary Belay, her brother, and Kevin. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, that was her daddy. But uh, I know Betty's 30 years old, but her job flew her to Dallas Friday till Tuesday. And by herself. Yeah, oh, so, but she had a convention. They're changing their name and yeah. sent her, and I'm just worried about her. And I'm gonna tell her. <laughs> 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 yeah, I don't know. Yeah, she. Uh, to Dallas, she did. Yeah, she's she been. She's doing. It was. She would. She would have tried to got out of it, but it was her. Poor Charlotte. It's her weekend at her daddy's. So, oh, okay. Uh, so it worked out. It worked out. That's good. <laughs> yeah. So we had Mother's Day. <laughs> yeah. When you had it with your mother today? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Oh, and the barbecue y'all were down the swirl. It, it was, and that's what we're it having. Was, <laughs> it was good. It was so good. That's the best part. Was, my brother says it was good. It's good. <laughs> Jim was up that's here. Well, yeah, uh, he right. said somebody was up here about two o'clock because well, I came to work in here, and and uh, he said somebody said, I'm, "Where is the barbecue?" Genuine pain and has a genuine situation that are not it's hard to, to be asked for. They could be monitored. I just think pain medication is there for a reason, mm -hmm. and I I yeah. understand, but you know it's kind of almost cruel. You know. Yeah, I don't think I it was. I have feel to feel like a criminal just yeah. to get certified. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. 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 And I Okay, I haven't spoken and then Ricky we got a call that he has another test, an MRI of his 
I suppose. I, I would think in, if he's praying, his head means that. Okay. Keep praying for my friend Amy. I forgot to mention her. Family trouble, living, where to move, and all that stuff. <clears throat> Amy Howard, put me down. Okay. okay.